Well, hello to you all beautiful freedom fighters and all the British patriots in our kingdom. Welcome to 2C TV and this is the latest live update uh, in regards to what's going on in the Middle East. Yes, the conflict continues and tonight we're going to give you uh, the latest when it comes to uh, Putin's reaction to Hamas because they had a bit of a meeting. And over the last couple of days, uh, we've had some interesting news coming from Kremlin, and um, which kind of makes sense because they always play the long game and they try to play chess. Sometimes they think they're playing 4D chess, but not really. All right. So hello to everybody in the live chat. We'll get your reaction live as usual. Let's get on with the show. What's going on here? So last night, where we first heard that uh, following the discussions that they had in Moscow, um, the, the Russian um, representatives essentially sent a message to uh, the Hamas leadership saying, OK, well, we've got other priorities right now. It's not just the Ukraine situation, but uh, for uh, commerce purposes, the, the, the situation in Yemen is more important right now. And they know that the Hamas side have also made a lot of, let's just say, wrong moves uh, over the last uh, three months. So the Russian diplomat, uh, Mikhail uh, Bogdanov, uh, has warned uh, the Hamas senior official, Musa Abu Marzouk, uh, that, uh, <clears throat> that the be essentially the best case scenario you could have is if they actually release all the hostages, and that by all the hostages they meant anybody who is an Israeli citizen, and foreigner or whoever they are, they have to release all of them. Uh, the position from Moscow has slightly changed compared to before. Not only what happened last night is important, but also what happened this morning and over the last few hours, because you had the Reuters and Al Jazeera asking questions from uh, the press secretaries, essentially, and the, the spokespeople from the Russian government. And they asked a very simple question. They said, what about the two-state solution? Because Russia's position until now, as essentially they see themselves as the head of the Eastern globalist bloc, even though China wants to be seen as more of the Eastern, uh, Eastern globalist leader, but it's technically still Russia. Um, until now, Russia's position was quite clear. They said, we just want a two-state solution. Wishy-washy version of it, essentially. But now it's changed. <clears throat> Putin's uh, office has now sent a message to the Hamas leadership saying, um, we can't really back a two-state solution unless you change your strategy and, of course, release every single hostage. So whilst we have been talking about the division inside the Israeli government, and we're going to talk about that tonight again, it is also interesting to see that the game is also changing from the other side as well, uh, because they know that the Iranian regime have also been putting more of their focus on the Houthis in Yemen and... Clearly, there have been conversations between Tehran and Moscow, uh, between the Iranian regime and the Russian government in regards to which to prioritize. And considering that the Hezbollah side are coming out to say, we are ready for any conflict. Hezbollah have been saying this for the past three months. Every week, every day, they've been saying the same thing and they do nothing. <laughs> they do absolutely nothing, apart from obviously sending rockets to the, towards the no northern side of Israel. Now, um, I believe one of the triggers for why uh, Putin's position slightly changed, or at least publicly speaking, is because of also what happened yesterday, over the last couple of days actually, uh, when Al Jazeera reported that the IDF discovered 21 bodies of Israelis in Gaza, <clears throat> their hostages. And then they clarified saying not all the 21 bodies could be Israelis because obviously there are other hostages as well in that huge group in terms of the international ones, foreign um, citizens. But it doesn't really matter, they are still part of the hostages and uh, they, have, they now have evidence and Russia has essentially confirmed that it was actually the Hamas side that eliminated them. They, they took, out, took out their lives and they basically said, I think they kind of lost control. I can imagine the situation with hostages is not really ideal because of the way uh, the, the Hamas uh, thugs operate. Um, I can imagine that every single day is actual terror for them and I can imagine torture could happen and things like that where a number of people might not survive intentionally or unintentionally that's the whole point and that's why we said this a month ago two months ago when they were doing negotiations and deals with Gaza uh, in terms of releasing hostages or exchanging hostages for the Palestinian criminals and their prisoners there was a point where we said okay the Hamas side seems to be deflecting and trying to basically ruin the the ceasefire and the, and the negotiations, mostly because a lot of people said, is it because some of the hostages are no longer alive? 
and they don't want to get caught out. Kind of makes sense. And unfortunately, that is the sad point about what is actually what could be happening in Gaza in those tunnels or wherever they're keeping these poor, innocent civilians. Following that, there's been more tensions being created in Tel Aviv. Um, over the last week or so, there have been massive protests, uh, of course, against uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's government. And once again, today, this is the picture that we have from the center of uh, Tel Aviv, where more protesters are coming out and obviously combined with the families of hostages. It's a combination of the families of hostages who are frustrated, some of the more liberal leftist side in Tel Aviv who are always against Netanyahu, and some people who are just basically fighting against Netanyahu's corruption, as they say, the Netanyahu's cabinet's corruption. Corruption aside, and, and you know, all the allegations against Netanyahu, there is a massive problem inside the cabinet itself. You know, we talked about how the, the Hamas side are all over the place, and the Russian side are changing the priorities, at least publicly speaking, the narrative. There's also a problem inside the, uh, the, the Netanyahu cabinet, because you've got the defense minister, Gallant, who's uh, attempted, apparently, to storm Netanyahu's office following uh, the war cabinet meeting. And apparently, the, this is according to Walla, the situation allegedly almost deteriorated into a fistfight. Okay. Netanyahu then threatened to bring the IDF to control the situation, went into the office. So, again, these are the things that are being reported and, and they were not denied by the Israeli spokesperson. But having said that, there have been a lot of divisions. Uh, we had uh, Benny going to the protests, uh, another member of the, the war cabinet who's you know, essentially more left wing anyway, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, they're not united. The Hamas are not united. The Iranian regime are not united. The Russian side don't seem to be united. There's no side that is united. <laughs> and, and nobody knows. And the, the, the reason there's a deadlock right now when it comes to the, the whole region is because there is really no bulldog. There is no Churchillian character. There is no one who is robust enough to either attack or defend or do counterattacks. Everybody seems to be all over the place uh, because the, the game has changed. And of course, uh, who's first to go? Hamas. Oh, yeah. Gaza is over, although they have said that they're temporarily they took back control of the northern side of Gaza. That doesn't really matter because the operation that the IDF are doing is lo location-based and they're moving uh, up and down to destroy the tunnels. <clears throat> also, there have been reports uh, that uh, some of the hostages are Russian and uh, one of the main reasons is, of course, uh, the Kremlin side changed their narrative because there were a lot of pressures in Moscow from the opposition to Putin saying well, you can't keep going out and propose a two-state solution while we still have our hostages as well part of the, the Gaza uh, situation. So um, the message from Moscow to Gaza is now no more two-state solution. First, release all the hostages, no condition, and then we can talk about it. So it's a quite similar um, position right now to most of the Israeli politicians. Now, I know Netanyahu is more robust, saying at this point, because of the, the toxicity of what's going on in the Palestinian territories, we can't, we can never have a two-state solution. Some people are saying we can if you wipe out the Islamists, but it's a very complicated situation. Now, let's go to the live chat, uh, get your reaction and see what you guys think. A um, couple of things. One about Russia's reaction. I want to know what you guys think. And two, this whole one-state, two-state solution um, from your perspective, where we are now with it, potentially speaking. First, actually, we have a comment uh, saying, Maya, are you going to Telford on the 27th of January this month? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, We reported this a couple of days ago. Uh, I think everyone's meeting at Telford Central Station. This is, uh, of course, uh, Tommy Robinson promoted this uh, gathering. This is to protest and fight against uh, the grooming gangs and uh, to fight for the safety of our women and girls and children in general. We'll talk more about that as we get closer to next week. <clears throat> Old school pizza, you know the haircut to see? <laughs> get down to the Turkish barber. <laughs> I can clarify my barber is actually Greek. Yes, we do have them. All right, let's go. Um, uh, June Duffy says, one of our regulars actually, saying, I feel blessed to have your knowledge, Maya. Thank you. Thanks for your backbone. Thank you so much. Actually, we have a super chat that I just missed. Chloe. I always miss Chloe's super chats. One of our regulars from Australia uh, saying, did Putin finally realize Aisha was nine? <laughs> Every live stream, Chloe mentions Aisha's age. Um, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure he knows. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. 
let's go back to the live chat. Uh, Dave, in terms of the two-state solution, Dave says the only state is Israel. Thing is, there have been enough offers of the two-state solution since 1948, since before 1948. And when one side continued to reject it, at one point you say, well, we can't keep offering it. So it's not going to work. Tracy O'Shea says uh, two-state will never work. It's a short-sighted non-solution. Exactly. I mean, it's in an ideal world, absolutely. But it's no longer that situation. And the world has changed. You can't really uh, recreate countries the way you used to or redraw the maps a bit for various reasons. Since the end of the 20th century, the whole geopolitics kind of changed. And in this new globalized world, um, it, it, unless you're going to do it in a very bloody way, you can't really do anything like that. There's no way any side could create a consensus um, and what are you going to do with all those um, people who are going to be in this so-called state of Palestine who will continue to attack? Now, there was a bit of consensus that was in a very fake way created between Pakistan and India. But even that's not sustainable. The only reason that they don't do anything much, much against each other, because they still do, is because of the nuclear stuff. Now, unless you want to give the Palestinians and Israeli side, both sides, nuke, <laughs> it's probably not a good idea anyway. You can't really do much. Barry says, Maya, do you think there is a hidden agenda behind Putin's actions, as this is not in Putin's character? Usually, yes. And it probably is. There, there might be, usually there's something else, because Putin always plays a chess game. But I've been kind of very objectively analyzing the actions from Moscow over the last few years. And I'm, I'm still fascinated by what the mission actually was when it came to Ukraine, from their perspective, not from what we think or from the supporters of Ukraine or the opponents of Ukraine think. The actual special military operation that Putin started, I want to know what actually was going on in his head and the top team. Not what we think they think. Because it, none of it makes sense about how it went and everything else and what the end goal is. And because of that, and I know that a lot of people, you know, they, they have their theories saying, well, no, 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 the guy knows what he's doing or Zelensky knows what he's doing. I don't really care. <laughs> Every side thinks they know what they're doing. But at this point, has Putin gone mad? Uh, has he gone isolated? Or there's a plan. <laughs> On the surface, as I said, my basic analysis is knowing the, the region and the history of those guys. It feels like just like the Iran Iranian regime, they've also shifted their focus from Gaza. They're moving towards more the Yemen situation and the Houthis, mostly because that is more impactful. If, they, if you want to hurt the Western side uh, by... Um, essentially focusing on disrupting the Red Sea, just like the Persian Gulf, but that causes more trouble. And they know that the Israel situation is kind of one-sided now. Israel versus Gaza. That is kind of one-sided. There's no way you can disrupt the Israeli side. Obviously, they can cause some protests in Tel Aviv, as is happening, but not really. You can't really stop the IDF. Um, unless you bring down Netanyahu and install someone who is more, as they say, pro-ceasefire prime minister, in office. <clears throat> uh, Brian says the UK isn't helping the Gaza conflict. They let hatred shown on the streets with uh, demonstrations. Fair enough. <laughs> Has Egypt or Jordan taken any refugees yet? Now, well, in fact, they did the exact opposite. Um, we showed you guys a few days ago when uh, Egypt built a triple wall and a fence. They, they essentially increased their existing fencing situation <laughs> to stop any Palestinian from crossing that border. It is absolute insanity. Um, Julian says, I'm not getting your notifications, Maya. I'm not surprised though, mate. Hope you're well. Thank you very much, Julian. Um, I, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a mystery. If Make sure at least you have clicked on the notification bell. After that, you have to click on all. Because it automatically, I think, is ticked on personalized. Click on all. But I think even when you click on all, all. You won't always get a notification. Apologies for that. It's not my fault. Um, Robert says, how can there ever be a two-state solution? Two states. Non-Israeli Arabs, uh, um, they like to call Palestinians, uh, are in two areas. How could they ever travel across Israel between Gaza and the West Bank, which should be Israel? But that's that's obviously one of the main, main obvious short-term problems when it comes to the the redrawing the map. <laughs> you got two territories between, unless you're going to give a corridor between Gaza and the West Bank to the future Palestine, that, that's not going to work. There's one solution, give Gaza back to Egypt. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to give Gaza back to Egypt. Um, but it is also complicated because 
where do you stop? And I think people forget it's not just about territory. You've got the ultra religious both sides, the ultra orthodox Jews, as well as the ultra uh, the Islamic proper Islamic Muslims. Those guys, there's also a different argument when it comes to the Holy Land area and Jerusalem and all those parts, because you, how are you going to have that conversation? That's always been one of the main issues, um, because if you, you're going to have to give it to one side. You can't. Any sort of offering, any sort of negotiations, even Bill Clinton, that idiot, any sort of offering wouldn't really solve that issue. So there's still part of it is about that political religious side, and the rest of it is territory. The rest of it, the m most part, is that the huge chunk of the Islamists in Gaza and the West Bank don't really care about territory. They don't even care about people in Gaza or people in the West Bank. They just want to destroy the Jews and then the Christians. That's the main game. How can you have a two-state solution negotiations if one side's main goal is to destroy the other one? Now, there are some actual ordinary innocent Palestinians who have just been born there as kids and those who are luckily not getting fully brainwashed in schools. It's not their fault that they're born there, but they're not in charge. Unless some of them are going to rise up and take control of the Palestinian Authority and say, OK, it's over now. We're no longer going to be, going to be promoting terrorism. Unless that happens in the next 10, 20, 30 years, you can't really have that negotiation. <clears throat> Gilbert says, why don't you send Palestinians to Mexico so they can dig tunnels for the cartel? Uh, well, actually, if they send them to Ecuador, uh, that, that's probably more urgent than Mexico. Um, it really depends on how you define Palestinian as well, because considering what the Ottoman Empire did was bringing people from different parts of the Arab world last minute and saying, well, now you're Palestinian. Otherwise, they're just called Arabs. And where do they come from? That's the main point. Considering in terms of the governance of the West Bank and Gaza, you had to deal with Jordan and Egypt in the past. Why is it not their responsibility anymore? Because they don't want those Arabs, the Palestinian Arabs anymore. Rod M says, we Palestinians don't fear you Zionists. Rod sounds uh, very much like a Palestinian name. Um, is it Al-Rod? Rod Mohammed, maybe? I don't know. Um, I do love how a lot of people, both the Islamist side and the political left, use the word Zionist as an insult. Zionist just simply means um, Israeli nationalist. It's nationalism. <laughs> Why is that an insult? It's the same thing with the political left when they use the word Tory as an insult. You're a Tory. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, I'm not, but <laughs> I'm a libertarian. But, you know, I used to be a Tory when I was young and naive. But, you know, things happen. Oh, there we go. Rod came back. As a Palestinian, I will remind you, Zionists, your time will come. I'm pretty sure you've been saying that since Mohammed. But okay, fair enough. Again, it doesn't have to be this hateful. This is the whole issue. What, okay, there are, by the way, I'm going to be objective. I'm going to be balanced. You've seen some of the stuff on Israeli TV. There are also some crazy people in Israel. We've seen some angry, extreme people who basically say, just wipe out all of them. That's also wrong. So I'm being objective. So... While being robust, saying the two-state solution is not viable right now anymore, I don't really condone either side, whether they go on the, the Palestinian TV or the Israeli TV, some people, the, the political commentators, let's just say, and advocate for just hate against the other side. And like, that's just unnecessary. I mean, I mean, we could sit here in London and say that's unnecessary, but how are you going to fix that if one side is just completely hateful against the, the other side? Why don't the Palestinians build a tunnel from Gaza to the Mediterranean? <laughs> yeah, that, that, well, actually, you could, they could just build a tunnel, a big, big tunnel, not a like, huge underground city from the river to the sea. Just under... <laughs> so, okay, I forgot that some people who are watching this actually from the Middle East, the, the Islamic side, they don't get the British sense of humor. They think I'm going to be serious. Oh, well. Teenage Wasteland says, I'm a proud Zionist. Exactly. Just own it. It's just nationalism. It's not... <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, Lee says your video of their ignorance was eye-opening. I think you're talking about the uh, the protesters. I'm guessing the political left who are supporting the Palestinian cause. It's fascinating, isn't it? None of these people cared about the Palestinian cause until yesterday. It's just so embarrassing. Uh, Catch up says we Zionists uh, will never fear anyone with God and Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Apparently, Jesus was a Muslim, according to some of the preachers in London, which is fascinating. Time travel is real, guys. Uh, he was a Muslim before Islam. Yeah, Doctor Who? 
Ja, okay. Um. <laughs> so Nigel of Raj says that Christianity te te teaches love, Islam teaches hate. Polar opposite. It's not just that. The, well, the system we have, the culture that we have in the West, uh, when we say overall speaking, the Judeo-Christian values, is simply the difference between this side and the other side is it's not just love versus hate. Is that the Judeo-Christian culture is about teaching and understanding life. The other side teaches um, death, promotes death and the afterlife, the obsession with the afterlife is absolutely fascinating. Everything you do on this planet, in this life, is for the afterlife. That's, that's, that's the Islamic side. Everything. So you have to basically make yourself suffer here. Don't enjoy life. It's okay, because all the things that are sinful here, you can do it later, and it's no longer sinful. Whereas the better version of it is that if you're going to promote people to not to do sin, any sort of sin, why do you have to then say you can do the sin later? Just say don't do the sin. <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm not talking about like you know the, the wishy washy sins. Like I'm like stealing, thief, like being being a thief or um, you know killing people or whatever. Um, and then just say you you don't have to wait for the afterlife. You, you know because you'll be a better person. Just oh. anyway, let's not get to theological on this topic. Uh, Chloe is back. Thank you so much, saying uh, I call. Uh, Palestinian Palestinians are uh, Hamastinians cause Hamastinians because <laughs> they are so brainwashed uh, by Farfour and in with, with Hamas. That's why I made Farfour music uh, videos to spread awareness. Um, <clears throat> Dima Sada says um, Russia can't beat Ukraine for years. How is Russia warned? Hamas, ha 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 ha. Is it true or a joke? Well, it's true, but it could also be a joke. <laughs> but yes, yeah, that's uh, obviously the statement from Kremlin. It is fascinating because, um, again, if you join the slate, the whole point of this was about uh, the main message that um, Russia sent to the Hamas side after meeting them in Moscow last night. Uh, Mikhail uh, Bogdan uh, Bogdanov said to the Hamas leadership, uh, well, one of the senior officials, uh, Musa Abu Marzuk, saying, um, the positions now changed from Russia. You have to release every single hostage because they know that some of them are linked to Russia in terms of the hostages. And there's, we can't, we can no longer promote the two-state solution for you guys. That's what they said to the Hamas side. So they know that the game is changing, but they, they might have another agenda. We don't know. Um, although, having said that, it is kind of interesting. There's one thing to consider because I think it was Barry who was talking about uh, what could be Putin's hidden agenda, or whatever. Because, you know, he usually wants to play chess. There's another thing that's going on right now. The, the narrative around Ukraine and Russia is changing because uh, we're going to do a video tomorrow about this properly. But uh, Zelensky has changed his uh, tune when it comes to Trump. He's ready for Trump. And he's also said, let's do peace. And the Russia side have also been preparing for peace talks slowly. And I think this could be an olive branch sort of thing to the West saying... Okay, if in 2025 or the end of 2024, we're going to start having some sort of negotiations between Russia and Ukraine, Olive Branch is for Putin not to fully support the Hamas side in Gaza. That could potentially be an obvious version. But again, you can never guess or speculate uh, about geopolitics because um, we will never be in the same room as the leaders who make this sort of decision. People have their own theories, but, you know, it's just theories. <clears throat> Uh, Rod is still talking in the live chat. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm done with uh, replying to him because uh, I've already given him enough attention. Rod from Palestine, apparently. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> All right, let's go back to you guys, see what you guys are saying. Newton says uh, Russia is fighting itself. I mean, there's a lot happening right now, obviously, in that part of the world. Uh, <clears throat> There's a lot of discussion about uh, the Bible versus Quran. We, we've done that so many times now. Anyway, we will keep you guys posted on this. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, the channel has massively grown. We've just again hit, where is it? 370,000 subscribers. We have gained 70,000 subscribers over the last three, four months. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. We're getting close to 400K. And once we get to 400K, another party. We're going to throw another party. And in the meantime, we are soon, and it's going to take a couple of months, launching 
um, a new product, a new scheme. <laughs> scheme, that sounds bad. Uh, we are launching the, the upgraded version of the channel. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be everything's going to be great. Um, and then soon we might even introduce an app. This is about the 2C TV Plus uh, outlets and platform that we are going to be introducing soon. In the meantime, if you do want to support the channel, feel free to go uh, on uh, uh, our locals community. The link is in the description. Uh, 2ctv.locals.com and you can actually use the code what's the code is it 2c yeah t-o-u-s-i use the promo code 2c and you'll get one month free uh, if you want to become a member and uh, have video calls with me and do li live q a's with members and everybody else uh, and then until we actually launch 2c tv plus platform which will be absolutely beautiful thank you so much for joining i'm maya 2c and we are the media